Gardens of Redemption, Christos and Estes, Christ is Risen. At the very beginning, darkness yielded to a voice, summoning forth light and life. In Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 through 13, a cosmetic dance of divinity that shaped the universe. The ancient tale resonates in John's gospel, where the word becomes flesh, illuminating humanity's path. In John chapter 1, verses 1 through 18, fast forward to the garden scene, where creation and incarnation converge. Mary Magdalene mistakes the risen Christ for a gardener in John chapter 20, verses 11 through 18, marking not just his resurrection, but the dawn of new beginnings, named the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And now we're going to ask the Lord. And now we're going to ask the Lord, shine into hearts of loving master, pure light of your divine knowledge, and own up the eyes of mine, that we may understand your teachings in the scripture. Help us to apply what we learn that you're having conquer simple desires. We may pursue a spiritual way of life, thinking and doing all the things you're pleasing to you. Your Christ, your God, your life, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, now and forever, the sages. Amen. The Lord is our shepherd. All right, good morning. Welcome back. So great is his faithfulness. Indeed, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Keep asking, keep seeking, keep knocking. Christ is truly in our midst. The true definition of minister is to serve someone else's will. It's my pleasure to bring you all God's word each and every day. So our first reading will come out of Genesis. All right, starting out, we're going to read in Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 through 13. And then John chapter 1, verses 1 through 18. And then we'll close out with John. Chapter 20, verses 11 through 18. And I put together a small summary of our readings. So without further ado, let's get right into our readings. Thank you all again for following. This segment is called Gardens of Redemption. So Christos and Estes, Christ is risen. Beautiful. Here we go. All right, so Genesis chapter 1. The history of creation. Name of the Father, Son. And the Holy Spirit. And it says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. So the evening and the morning were the first day. Then God said, Let there be a ferment. In the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. Thus God made the ferment and divided the waters which were under the ferment from the waters which were above the ferment. And it was so. And God called the ferment heaven. So the evening and the morning were the second day. Then God said, Let the waters under the heavens be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. And God called the dry land earth. And gathering together of the waters he called seas. And God saw it was good. Then God said, let the earth bring forth grass. An herb that, that yields seed. And the fruit tree that yields fruit according to its kind. Whose seed is in itself on the earth. And it was so. And the earth brought forth grass. The herb that yields seed according to its kind. And the tree that yields fruit whose seed is in itself, according to its kind. And God saw it was good. So evening and morning were the third day. Name the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Beautiful. In John chapter 1, the eternal word. Name the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And God, and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. And all things were made through him. And without him, nothing was made. That was made. And in him was life. And the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. John's witness, the true light. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. This man came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light which gives light to every man coming into the world. He was in the world, the world was made through him, and the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own did not receive him. But as many as received him, to them he gave 
the right to become children of God, to those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. The word becomes flesh. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten, the Father, full of grace and truth. John bore witness of him and cried out, saying, Was he of whom I said, He who comes after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. And in his fullness we have all received, and grace for grace. For the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has seen God at any time, the only begotten Son, who is in the bosom of the Father. He has declared him, named the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. In John chapter 20, verses 11 through 18, Mary Magdalene sees the risen Lord. Listen attentively, named the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And it says, but Mary stood outside by the tomb weeping. And as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the tomb. And she saw two angels in white sitting, one at the head and the other at the feet where the body of Jesus had lain. And they said to her, woman, why are you weeping? And she said to them, because they have taken away my Lord. And I do not know where they have laid. And now when she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there and did not know that it was Jesus. And Jesus said to her, woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? She, supposing him to be the gardener, said to him, sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. And Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him, Rabbi, which is to say teacher. And Jesus said to her, do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to my father. But go to my brethren and say to them, I'm ascending to my father, your father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and that he had spoken these things to her. And the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Beautiful readings. Beautiful readings. As we stepped into that grand tapestry of creation, where a divine masterpiece of light and life emerged from ancient chaos, and Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 through 13, unveils the majestic narrative of creation, where the creator speaks forth existence into being, separating light from darkness, waters from skies and land from seas. And this cosmetic shift, Vegetation bursts forth, and, and fertile earth, a garden blooming with the promise of life. But this ancient tale of creation echoes in the timeless prologue of John's gospel. Where the word, the essence of divinity, cre creativity, becomes flesh and dwells among us. In John chapter 1, verses 1 through 18, we encounter the cosmetic significance of this word existing before all time, infusing the universe with life and inviting humanity into divine communion. But as we fast forward to the dawn of a new day, as we fast forward to the dawn of a new day, where the shadows of despair cloak a garden tomb, and the calm stillness of early morning, Mary Magdalene encounters a figure she mistakes for the gardener. So Mary Madden encounters a figure she mistakes for the gardener. In John chapter 20, verse 11 through 18, we witness a profound convergence of past and presence as Christ stands amidst the fragrant blossoms, bringing forth a new dawn of resurrection and renewal. Consider the striking parallel between this garden encounter and the lush splendor of Genesis. Back in Genesis chapter 1, verses 11 through 13, all right, so back in Genesis 11 through 13, God commands what? The earth to bring forth vegetation, each seed yielding its plant, and each tree bearing fruit with seeds within it. Here, in this act of divine creation, we witness the birth of life itself, 
a fertile garden teeming with potential. What does it sound like in verses 11 through 13 right there in Genesis? God sounds like a gardener, right? Now connect this with Mary Magdalene's encounter in John 20. Mistaking Jesus for what the gardener. Mary stands on the threshold of the new creation moment. In her tears and confusion, she embodies the longing of all creation for redemption, for the restoration of what was lost in the shadows of the Garden of Eden. In that sacred moment, as Jesus speaks her name, the garden of her grief transforms into a garden of resurrection, a place where death gives way to life and despair yields to hope. So as we journey together through the sacred text, tracing the divine thread that weaves through the fabric of creation, incarnation, and resurrection. Let us, all, let us all marvel at the boundless creativity of the holy gardener who tends the garden of the souls with tender care, bringing beauty from the ashes and life from death. As we linger in the radiant glow of these ancient narratives, may our hearts be filled with awe and wonder at the ever unfolding mystery of God's redeeming love. Christos and Nestes, Christ is risen, and with him the garden of our souls blooms anew, vibrant, with the promise of redemption and the fragrance of eternal hope. Name the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And that's where we'll end. We'll close out in prayer. Hope you enjoyed. Hope you all enjoyed this. Man, something that spoke to me this morning. Man, we just finished up our Lent in the Orthodox Church. And last night I went to, to bed. As I went to bed at four o'clock in the morning, I was thinking about how to deliver a message. So Christ is risen. Christos and Nestes, Christ is risen. Truly, truly he is risen. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Oh Lord God, you've spoken to us your divine and saving words. You illuminate the souls of sinners that comprehend what we just read. That we don't appear simply as hear spiritual words, but doers of good deeds, true pursuers of faith, and a blameless life and conduct without approaching Christ our Lord, you are light, and to you we keep glory, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, now and forever, this ages. Amen. The Lord is our shepherd. Our Father, forth in heavens, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. But yours is the kingdom, power, glory, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, now and forever. In this ages. Amen. The Lord is our shepherd. We depart in peace in the name of the Lord, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Peace be with you all. Go in peace. Shalom. Shalom. May the Lord forgive those who love us and those who hate us. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Lord, make his face shine upon you and be merciful to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, Son. Holy Spirit, now and forever, the sages. Amen. Christos and Nestes, Christ is risen. Truly, he is risen. I love you all so much. Have a blessed day.